Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today, we will be completing the quest underground pass. The quest requirement is biohazard and the stat requirement is 25 ranged. Now we do have two skill suggestions. One is having 50 or higher thieving, because this will unlock a shortcut in the pass, as well as a high agility level. The higher your agility, the better. Since the follow-up quest regicide requires you to get 56 agility anyway, why not just get that agility level for the underground pass to make your life a lot easier. 40 items needed. Any kind of bow and between 1 and 5 non-poisoned arrows, which both of which you don't mind dropping. 2 ropes and a spade. For the recommended items, approximately 3 stamina potions of 4 doses as well as your weight reducing clothing. Then also some food to heal at the very least 60 hit points to pass the grid. Then also some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill 4 monsters of around combat 90. Of which 3 are definitely safe spotable if you're using magic or ranged. And then also some more food to heal from repeatedly failing the agility obstacles in the pass. 1 empty inventory slot as well as an empty ammo slot. And then maybe also some coins if you would want to buy some more food while you are in the dungeon. For the teleports, to speed things up, I've brought along a Wester Doin and a regular Easter Doin for when the quest is gonna be completed. So, where to start this quest is here in the East Ardoin Castle, right next to West Audi. Let's climb to the second floor and there you'll find the quest start. Let's talk to King Lathis and select option 1 twice. After speaking to him and starting the quest, let's make our way to West Ardoin. You could also just climb down and go through the gate, but teleport is slightly faster. Once you are in West Ardoin, just go west until you can't go any further northwest. Once you see a dungeon sign there next to it, you will find Kavtik. Let's talk to him and select option 1. After speaking to him, let's enter the cave. Next, continue west until you see a swamp area, which is green on your minimap. Because one cannot simply pass the swamp, there are two paths, north and south. It doesn't matter which one you take, just simply climb over some rock slides to avoid the swamp, and then you will find Kavlik once again. Be sure that you have one empty inventory slot, and let's talk to him to get some cloth. Next, use the oily cloth on your arrows to get a fire arrow. Use this on the everlasting fire next to the southern wall. Then go around the northern rock and make your way to the fence next to the creek. Then turn your camera towards the creek or the other side and you'll find a guide rope. Equip your bow and your fire arrow. Be sure that you do not drop anything you do not want to lose and then fire at the guide rope. If you've successfully done this, your character will automatically cross the bridge. If you fail, they will need to go back to Kovtik, get more oily cloth, make more fire arrows and try again. Next, let's go north and you'll find a red dot on your minimap. Pick up that plank and then go back south and follow this dungeon. Follow the dungeon until you see a rock which will split the path in two. South there's some water, ignore that, go to the pit. And above the pit they'll find some hanging rock. Use your rope on it, on the overhanging rock. If you would fail the rope swing, simply follow the path back to the entrance of the path and then simply make your way back to this pit to try again and use your second rope. Once you have successfully swung across the pit, let's follow the dungeon until we see a grid. And this will be the second most annoying part of this quest. I want to say four things about this grid. First, the safe path to get across the grid is random for everyone. Second. How to get across this grid safely without the use of any bugs 
that will mean that we will have to do this by trial and error. And by each error, you will take 15 damage, which is part 3. And now for part 4, use Rapid Heal, because we will be passing an altar really soon. So what I mean by trial and error is by simply go to any of these grid lines and see if you fail or not. If that part of the grid isn't part of your safe pass across the grid, then you will fall into a pit and take 15 damage. Simply click around the walls to climb back up and try again. What you could do if you're using the rune light client, if you already know what part of the grid is correct for you, hold down shift and then mark that tile. If you're not using rune light, then you could also simply use your notepad and just mark it that way, which ones are correct for you. Or what you also could do is just simply wait until you're done here. Wait, what? I need to go back up north. Or what you also could do is just simply wait until you're done with this grid, then open up something that will take a picture of your screen, for example, ShareX. Select the region, right click, edit, and then just draw, and then just simply draw a line across this stuff. And then save this image because during the next quest called Regicide, you will need to go through this dungeon and pause this grid two more times. So once you finally cross the bridge, I'm gonna be marking by rune light. Simply go to the southwestern corner and pull the lever. This will open up the gate to the next part of this pass. Next, continue westward. But don't go too far because there will be five wall traps that we'll need to pass. The first two are on the northern wall. You could do two things. Either ignore and run past them, but they will take 8 damage each. The second thing that you could do is simply use your thieving skill by left clicking and search the art markings and select option 1 to give it a go. Once you've passed the two northern ones, there will be three more on the southern wall. Get past all three of them till you've made it to the well and the altar. Right, let's recharge our prayer points. And in this area, you will find four paths. Let's start with the northern one, and let's use our plank on the flat rock. Do this two more times until you see an orb. Grab that orb, and then use the plank to get back to the center of the room. Once you're back in the center, let's uh, do this anti-clockwise. The northwestern one is pretty simple. Simply ignore the monsters and grab that orb. Maybe use protect from melee because else you'll be taking unnecessary damage. Once you got the second orb, let's return to the center and let's and let's take the western passage. This one is the same one as the north one, but except for three flat rocks, we will need to do five of them before we'll be able to reach and pick up the orb. Alright, once you've made it back to the center, let's go into the final path, the southwestern one. There seems to be nothing there, but once you've made it to the orb, 
right click on it and then disable the trap. Be sure to find the flat rock, search it, give it a go and if you succeed you will take the fourth and the final orb. Let's return to the center and let's pass those five odd markings again, the five wall traps. Because just east of the five wall traps which we have just passed there is a furnace and inside that furnace we will need to put these four orbs of light. Once you've made it back to the zombies and the furnace, let's use all four of the orbs on the furnace. This should take a little while and once we have done this, let's return to the center, back to the altar to recharge our prayer points if you're still using Rapid Hill. Once you've made it back to the dungeon sign and the altar, let's quickly recharge our prayer points and then turn off our prayers because this will be the final altar in this dungeon. Once you've done this, let's climb down the well to level 2 of this dungeon. Next, let's go a little bit west and let's search the crates to find some food. Next, let's follow the dungeon and pick lock the first southern gate of a cage. Once you're inside, let's go south and next to the southern wall you'll find some loose mud. Use your spade on it. Next, follow this path until you see a ledge. Use your agility skill to try to cross this. If you fail, you will end up at the blessed giant rats. Simply make your way back to the cage and try again. Next, go a little bit south and you'll find some walkways, which once again you will need to use your agility to get across. But if you have 50 thieving, then you can simply skip this part. If you don't have 50 thieving, simply go across the walkway, then follow the path going south, north, north, and then you will make it to the end. But since I have 50 thieving, I'm simply going south of the walkways and I'm gonna pick lock this gate. Then I'm simply gonna be running east and simply avoid all of that stuff. Right, once you've made it, once you've made it past the agility obstacle, let's continue the dungeon and squeeze through the pipe. Next, go a bit west and you'll find a cage. Search it to find a railing. Next, let's go up the slope a bit south, south of the unicorn. And because no innocent soul can enter Ivan's cavern, let's use the railing on the boulder. And then go back to the cage where we have gotten our piece of railing from. By the way, you may drop it, because the deed is done. Let's search the cage to find a unicorn horn. Next, go north and pass through the tunnel. Follow the dungeon once again until you see three paladins. By the way, while you're running towards them, you may drop your rope because this is not needed anymore as well as your leftover arrows, as well as your bow. We will be needing a lot more inventory space. Once you've found the three paladins, be sure to have at least seven empty inventory slots and let's talk to Sir Jarrow. 
and he will provide you with some supplies. Let's repay this kind sub by simply killing him as well as his two colleagues for their paladin badges. Because once again, no innocent soul can enter Ibon's cavern. By the way, if you are an archer or a major, you can use this everlasting fire inside this room as a safe spot. Right, once you've gotten your third Paladin badge, let's go a bit west and use your plank on the final flat rock of this pass. Let's continue west until you see a well. By the way, once you've completed this quest, you will need to return to this well and use Ivan's staff on it to be able to recharge it. Here at the well, let's use the three badges on it and toss it in there, as well as the unicorn horn. And now Iwin will know that your heart is pretty tainted and definitely not innocent. And he will unlock the door just west. And welcome to the second part of this quest. Continue through the conversation with Kavtek. Once the conversation is over, let's equip our weight losing clothing again and you may drop your plank as well as your spade. Next, let's run south. This area is quite massive, so simply keep running south until you can't go any further. Once you've made it to the southeastern corner, let's continue west until you see some stairs or a dungeon sign. There will find some stairs, climb down or descend into the cave and next to you you'll find a fence. Use your minimap and click in it to go and enter this camp. Inside you'll find three dwarfs. We will need to talk to Niluf. It's the first one next to the gate. Let's talk to Niluf and he will provide with some more supplies. Next, if you would ever get in a dire need of food inside of this dungeon, you will always be able to talk to Cayman and simply decline his offer and then pay him 75 GP and he will always provide some food for you. Once you've spoken to Niluf, let's exit this camp and let's go back ascending the cave, ascending the stairs to go back to the large area. Let's return the way we came from. But this time you will need to look for some walkways that you are able to walk onto. And then walk onto the very first one you are able to walk onto. They will immediately see that the walkway is broken. Simply click on the hole to try to jump it. If you would fail you will have returned to the area downstairs with the dwarves. Simply go back south, return all the way back to the walkway to try again. 
The success rate of jumping this gap all depends on your agility level. This is why I suggested you to get 56 agility at the start of this quest. Once you've successfully jumped the gap, let's go south and you'll find a small house. Do not enter it, but right click on the door and then search it. Wait, what? Next to the door, you'll find a window. Search it and click to continue. Next, go back north, back to the gap that we have just successfully jumped from. But instead of going east, let's continue west and try to jump this gap as well. If you've successfully done this, continue north until you find a yellow dot on your minimap. Run towards it and pick up the witch's cat. Once you've done this, let's go back south, jump the gap, simply return to the witch's house. Once you've returned to the house, use the witch's cat on the door and the witch will be distracted. Click to continue and then make some space in your inventory. Be sure that you have at least four empty inventory slots. Next, open the door and next to the door you'll find a chest. Open it and then click to continue. Once you got the doll of Ivan, let's exit her house and let's go back up north. Once again, let's jump the western gap. And instead of going north where the cat was, we will now need to go south. Following the southern walkway, you will find one more gap, as well as three demons. Defeat all three of them and pick up their amulets.
All right, once you've defeated the third demon, let's jump the gap once again towards Dumian, and north of him you'll find a chest. Open it once you have all three D amulets. And by doing this, you just got Ivan's shadow put on the doll. This was item one out of four that we'll need to put on the doll. So what we'll now need to do is make our way back downstairs. We will now need to go back to the dwarves. So either run all the way back, or if your agility level is like less than 80, you could probably try to jump across gaps until you finally failed a gap. Right, once you've made it back to the uh, basement, let's return to the dwarves. And we'll now need to talk to Clank. Talk to Clank, the darker skin colored one, I think. And he will give you his gauntlets. Next, let's enter the western building with the anvil sign. They'll find a bucket spawn. Let's take it. And then enter the eastern smaller shed. Inside, next to the eastern wall, you'll find a barrel. Use a bucket on the brew barrel. And then close the door. Behind the door, you'll find a tinderbox. Take it and then exit. Next, we'll need to go east of the entrance or the stairs going to the upper level. Just east of the stairs, you should find Ivan's tomb. Use the dwarf's brew on it and then set it ablaze using your tinderbox to smear the ashes of Ivan on the doll. Next, let's go north-northwest. You may drop your bucket as well as your tinderbox, by the way. And continue going north to kill the final monster in this quest, which is a combat 90 spider. Keep going north until you see a corridor with a lot of blessed spiders. Go inside that corridor and try to kill the combat 90 giant spider. But if you're less than combat uh, 80, then all these small monsters will at be attacking you. Oh, they changed this? Oh, that's nice. Previously, before Song of the Elves was released, it was so annoying to be able to attack Kelrag because all the small ones, their attack speed was a lot faster and it was really difficult to be able to attack Kelrag. If you're an archer or a ranger, simply stand next to the eastern wall, stand between the two skeletons, and that would be your best available safe spot in this area. And once you've defeated Kelrak, you've smeared Ivan's blood over the doll. That is item 3 out of 4. Next, exit the corridor, and then go northwest. Keep going northwest until you see a narrow passage. Follow it to the dungeon sign and then ascend the stairs. Next, go south and keep going south until you see a third ledge. And the third ledge you will immediately need to jump a gap. Jump that gap, and then go north. Then go east. Follow it, and then take the first one west. Be sure to equip Clank's gauntlets, and then search that cage. And by searching this cage, you have found the final item which you have smeared over the doll of Ivan. Next, let's go back south back the way we came but instead of going back and jumping the gap to the western side we will now need to go east and follow this walkway at the T junction go south until you see two gaps those are the final two gaps that we will need to jump if you were to fail these ones then Yep, 
Yeah, try to get back. Right, once you've successfully jumped those two gaps, let's kill one disciple of Ibon. And then grab their ropes. Grab the Zamorak Monk rope and bottom. Equip both of them and then go west towards the door. Be sure that you have above 10 hit points and then open the door. Then, while waiting for the cutscene to end, use right click on the doll and then use this on the well to basically complete your quest. So once you got the Ibon stuff in your inventory, let's teleport or simply follow the dungeon to make our way back to West Ardoin, and let's simply return to the quest start, talk to King Lathis to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've just completed the quest with the darkest story in the game. You are awarded with 5 quest points, 3000 attack and agility experience, as well as Ibon stuff, which has the ability to cast Ibon Blast. And you've now also completed a quest requirement for Legends Quest, Recipe for Disaster Freeing Amic Vaz, as well as Regicide. If you would wish to start Regicide at the moment, then simply select option 1, but I don't want to at this very moment. By the way, during the Regicide quest, you will need to run through the underground path twice more, so be sure that you have not forgotten your personal safe path to get across that grid at the very start of this pass. Alright, that was my guide how to complete the underground pass quest, hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye. By the way, you may drop the book on the history of Ibon as well as Clank's gauntlets. Clank gauntlets were best in slot back in 2003, but not anymore.